Brilliant, giving Lehman Hall the time to find his primary and secondary receivers. Army puts it all together. This was the day the team and coaches were pointing for. Ward White's touchdown grab ends it with a flourish as Army heads home with a convincing 31-6 decision over Air Force. The first time Air Force has been held without a touchdown since the series began. Army completes the first step toward the Commander-in-Chief's trophy. Army, Navy, the game. Throw out past records, past performances, and yesterday's heroes. This is a new day, a new year, a new beginning. It represents a chance for the Army players to realize their dream. Lehman Hall, Clenny Brundage, and Greg King were possessed by that one dream, victory over Navy. was near zero as a crowd of more than 81,000 awaited the kickoff in Philadelphia's Kennedy Stadium. The largest television audience of the season tuned in for college football's most spectacular show. Army's Lehman Hall makes his first pass attempt of the contest a big one. His long completion to Jim Merrigan does not lead to a score, but Army now knows it can move the ball against Navy. The Army defense does a remarkable job containing the ever-dangerous Bob Lashinsky. Ed Clemens and John Hilliard combine for a key pass interception. Center Chuck Johnston opens a hole for Greg King, who darts through for an Army first down. This drive succeeds as Lehman Hall pushes over from the one. Just before the end of the quarter, Bob Lashinsky's pass for Joe Gattuso is picked off by linebacker John Hilliard, and the cadets maintain their 7-0 advantage. The option play that was so successful against Air Force is working just as well against Navy. Greg King takes Army to the 12-yard line. Navy stops the drive at the three, but on fourth and goal, senior Mike Costelli from Carmel, New York, comes through. After Navy counters with a touchdown, Lehman Hall spearheads another Army drive. Wide receiver Bill Skoda from Rockville, Maryland, makes a fine catch. The counterplay working so well, with Greg King carrying switches to Jim Merrigan, exploding from halfback. Merrigan's 17-yard run is worth a second look. The Army offensive line is superb, allowing the backs time to execute their moves with clock-like precision. Tested time and time again, Navy cannot stop Army. A key play on the second Army touchdown drive is this interference call against Navy. Army's Ward White is knocked down with the ball in the air, and the cadets are on the one-yard line. Greg King crashes in for the second Army TD, and the cadets have a 17-7 halftime lead over the midshipmen. Navy gets on the board one more time with Joe Catuso carrying. Now it's a heart stopper at 17-14. The final quarter belongs to the Army defense. George Mays, who makes Orange, New Jersey his home, makes the Navy backfield his private playground. Tiki Trailer, Mays, and the entire Army defense are playing the game of a lifetime. Winding down toward the two-minute mark, Lashinsky has to march Navy more than half the length of the field. He connects with Phil McConkey on fourth down. Two minutes remain, another key fourth down situation. Lashinsky to McConkie again for a first down of the Army 17. Second and 10 from the 17, Lashinsky throws for John Kurowski, but Army's chuck shot breaks up the play. 1.20 to go, Gattuso on the draw, tripped up by John Hilliard, shy of the first down. Fourth down on the Army nine. Joe Catuso spots his man. The halfback option pass. 
incomplete. Army stops the Navy drive. It was finally over. Four years of blood, sweat, and tears. Army beats Navy 17-14. For the seniors, their dream come true. For the underclassmen, their greatest reward. For the coaches, a job well done. For the record books, a 7-4 season, the best since 1968. And finally, for beating both Air Force and Navy, the most significant prize of all, the Commander-in-Chief's Trophy. Football is once again a mighty force at West Point. These are the good old days.